guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Tyra and I am an incoming freshman at NYU studying media, culture, and communications. So in my last video, I gave you guys a general guide on how to apply to college. And in today's video, I'm going to be going a little bit more in depth on how I got into all the schools that I applied to. So let's get on into today's video. So before I get into anything, let's just talk about the schools that I applied to. So I applied to Temple University, The New School, Howard University, Fordham University, Baruch College, Hunter College, NYU, and Montclair State. So I got into all of those schools. I applied as a communications major. Um, there's different names for it at each school, but that's basically the major that I applied to. For Howard, I applied as a film major just because I didn't really have a communications major. Um, but yeah, so I think it's very important to point out that I applied early action to a majority of my schools except for Hunter College, Baruch College, and Montclair State. It made making the decision a little bit easier because I, by the time it was January, I had like a majority of my college decisions out except for NYU which came out the end of March. So I had my college essay completed and ready in a majority of you know the information I was going to write in supplemental essays done by like I would say maybe November that gave me a, a good amount of time to have quality answers pre-written so applying early action or early decision is something that I would definitely recommend okay so I just want to go in depth a little bit in depth as to what exactly I wrote about in my college essay and in my supplemental essays so because I think it's important to know what exactly do you like what points do you exactly have to hit in your essay for them to be like okay let's accept them let's let's get them the spa in class of 2026 a lot of the times the questions that schools are asking in your supplemental essay prompts is why are you applying to the school like why are you choosing this school um, how will you be a valuable asset to our school? But basically in all of my supplemental essays I go through a few pointers in every single one. So just to get a nutshell, I talk about how I'm going to be a valuable asset to each school, to each program that I'm applying to. I talk about how this major aligns with my goals, with my passions, with my hobbies. I talk about specific aspects of each school that I see myself really enjoying and how those clubs, how those programs align with my values. And number four, how the school is going to help me further my dreams and, and really achieve what I want to achieve in life. Okay, so basically what I wrote about in my college essay, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and go through as a quick, light out outline as to what exactly I wrote about. Okay, so in my college essay, I basically started out with an anecdote um, of my 16th birthday. I talk about how when my dad and my parents were dancing, my dad looked very awkward dancing. I'm not a dancer, so I got, it gave me a flashback to a bar bat mitzvah I went to um, and everyone was dancing and they were like Tyra come dance with us and I was like mm, I really want to um, and so I go on the dance floor and they're like Tyra don't just stand there and dance and I'm like oh my gosh I, I wish with like every bone in my body that I could just dance but I couldn't because I'm awkward and don't like dancing that's what I talk about so then I go on to say how a lot of my high school experience I spent it wondering overthinking what people thought of me and so I let that fear kind of curl me further into myself um so i talk about my social anxiety how i didn't really talk to people um because how there is a tyra that everyone knew you know the quiet writer girl who likes to daydream and stay afloat who likes to make films and then there is a tyra that i hit um and i talk about how i didn't just like live in my thoughts i drowned in them so things like that then I go on to talk about a pivotal conversation I had with my older sister. She basically told me that your your reputation is not set in stone. She tells me that you don't have to stay as, you know, the quiet, socially awkward girl. Like, you can be whoever you want to be. So from that day on, I start to take a little bit more risk. I start to say hi to people more in, in, in high school. I start to break out of my shell. And so then I talk about how my junior year, I start I run for student council secretary and won. I talk about how I became the co-editor chief of my school newspaper, which was unheard of as a junior. Um, and I talk about how just taking risk and, and just 
being myself unapologetically in my school environment really helped me to break out of my shell. And then I go on toward the end of my essay to talk about how I really underestimated how truly kind and supportive my student peers were. Um, and then toward the very, very end, I talk about how I plan to continue to flourish into my very best self in college, how I will unapologetically be myself and take up space in every in every room that I enter in college, how I will really be an asset to student life in college. Um, so yeah, that is my college essay in a nutshell. Basically, a few pointers. I talk about my passions, I talk about a big transformation that I went through in high school um, and how I will plan to be in college. That's a nutshell. So I think what really pulled in, you know, readers was that anecdote in the beginning and then the chunk of it where I talk about that transformation and then the end where I talk about how I'm really going to be an asset to the college that I'm, go that I'm applying to. So that's my college essay in a nutshell. Take any notes that you feel free to w would like to, you know, grab from that essay. Um, so another factor that definitely played into how I got into all of my schools are my grades. Um, throughout high school, I would say from freshman year to sophomore year, I was in a small learning community that had honors classes. It was called the Institute of Humanities. And basically what it was, it gave you honors classes that was focused on history class and English class and those are my two favorite classes so that's why I was in that program. It basically was a feeder program to prepare you for um, AP classes and while I did not end up taking AP history my junior year I did end up being really you know well prepared for AP language and composition um, so that was a great class that was a great program it definitely did help me learn time management it helped me learn just how to juggle being an honor student, how to be a better writer in a short amount of time. So through high school, I was an AB student. I got pretty great grades. Um, and I think that is definitely due to the honors programs that I was in and the honors courses that I took. But yeah, another crucial thing is when I was in high school, I wasn't really afraid to ask the teacher for help. If I didn't understand anything, I stayed up for school and got any confusion cleared up. Course rigor in terms of like the courses that you enroll in in high school definitely do matter. So keep that in mind if you're a sophomore or freshman that is starting to think about colleges. Um, try to take like heavier classes, at least one AP class your junior year because um, it'll prepare you for like harder classes. I totally forgot to add that in addition to my grades I was also in the Rho Kappa National History Honor Society and I was also in Ascriptus which is the English Honor Society um, because as I've said those were two of my favorite courses. Okay so the next thing that definitely helped me in terms of getting into all of my colleges were letters of recommendations. So I asked for these way early on my senior year. I think I started asking for them probably in October before I submitted my applications to most of my schools in November. Um, so definitely ask your guidance counselor, ask your teachers early on and if you're a junior right now try to develop like a, a try to develop a relationship with one of your favorite teachers that way you know that they have seen your qualities, they've seen your best qualities, and they can have something to write about. Don't just ask any teacher because they're literally not gonna know what to say. But yeah, I've taken, I took journalism courses from the from my from my freshman year so I was able to have a newspaper teacher who was able to speak on my leadership qualities being in newspaper as co-editor-in-chief she was able to speak on my passion for writing for filmmaking um, just me as a person generally so I think having that connection with one of my favorite teachers was definitely a benefit to me because she was able to convince admissions officers who I am um, and kind of prove what I was talking about in my college essays and things like that. Definitely if you are a sophomore, if you are a junior, if you have that favorite teacher that you know, you think that they would be able to write a good letter of recommendation for you, don't abandon that connection because they can really help you and they really do want what's best for you. Just make sure that you're aware they're teachers, they have a lot on their plate, so ask them early. That way they're not scrambling to write a last minute letter of recommendation. Um, and once you do get your college acceptances, um, I do recommend that you give them like a thank you letter because that's what I did for both the teachers that I asked letter letters of recommendation from and they definitely did appreciate it so the next thing that definitely helped me out in getting into all my colleges were my extracurriculars um, so some of the things I did in high school were newspaper I was 
a leader in my newspaper club. I was the co-editor chief, so I led a lot of the meetings. I led, um, I had like a writer's workshop that I did for people who didn't take journalism classes but were in the club. Oh, I helped like publish the articles, obviously. I edited the articles, maintained the website. Uh, I also was part of student council, so as secretary, I was kind of like the hub of communication. I maintained the student council Instagram. I made, I just basically spread information, like important information to the student body as student council, um, and also maintained communication between like higher ups, like teachers, principals, things like that. Club's activities helped me in terms of leadership, and I was able to incorporate that into my college essay, which is something I do recommend you doing. Um, I also had a lot of pre-college programs under my belt, so I did a pre-college program at FIT my freshman year, and I, you've probably seen the film that I made from that program. It's on my channel right now if you would like to see it. And I also did a summer program um, twice in a row. It's called School of New York Times. And basically, the School of New York Times is a summer program that's hosted by the New York Times, and it's housed in um, Fordham's Lincoln Center campus. So you basically take a course for two weeks and you're let, you're taught by someone who either been a published author or writer in the New York Times or someone who is like a professional in the course that they're teaching. Um, so it gives you really great connections. I got, I've been like networked with like real professionals in the journalism industry through that course and that course definitely helped me build a solid writing portfolio which I then went on to submit to the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards which I won a Silver Key Writing Award for so you know all those experiences definitely helped me to win some awards get some recognition for my work which I of course added to my common app I think um, if you have any experiences like that you think will impress admissions off like admissions people Put it in your common app because that's your time to shine, to brag about yourself. Um, so I definitely did not hold back on that common app or scholarship applications for that matter. Those are a few of the extracurriculars that I wrote about in my common app. Another, I would just like to emphasize, I said this in my last video, but I will say this again. In terms of extracurriculars, if you are a freshman or junior or even a, a sophomore, it doesn't matter how many clubs you're in per se, but it matters like the impact that you have left on those clubs after you graduate. They, the admissions officers don't want to see that you dipped your toes in a few clubs and then just added it to your college application just because. They want to see if you've actually had a lasting impact on your school like in student life because they want to see like how you are going to be potentially in their college environment. So keep that in mind when you're um, starting this new school year and seeing which clubs you want to be involved in. I know for me, I joined student council my junior year because I wanted to do like something new, something different. Um, and it was actually a lot of fun. I, I that's that was a new experience for me. My senior year, um, my junior year, I also tried out for pole vault, which was a lot of fun. But I only had like probably two weeks because COVID happened and our season was canceled. But um, if you, even if you're a junior, that's still a great time to try new clubs because you still have probably at least like that whole year to speak on experiences when you're writing your college applications so if you up to your point of junior year have not done a lot of clubs you still have time that whole junior year to try new things and add that to your college application um, that's what I did I did track my freshman sophomore and junior year and that first two years of high school I didn't do pole ball and I decided I was gonna try pole ball and it was a lot of fun but um, didn't get too much out of it because of COVID but definitely try some new things even if you're still a junior and you and you haven't like done too much yet because you can still talk about it in your college applications so the last thing I know a lot of people a lot of juniors stress about test scores honestly I think the only test scores that you should be worrying about are AP scores can that because that could actually get you college credit SAT scores ACT scores they truly don't matter I didn't do the SAT or the ACT and I got into one of the hardest schools to get into with the scholarship so you'll be fine you don't need to take that test um, don't even waste your time studying for it because um, a lot of schools are test optional I know last year for the class of 2025 schools were test optional and I think even 
for a class of 2026, schools are going to be test optional because they know the impact that COVID-19 has had on students' ability to take the SAT. So take advantage of that because they're probably not going to have that for too long. Or some schools may come to their sentence, senses and finally do test optional like Temple did years ago. Don't even stress about that if the schools you're applying to are test optional because they're going to be impressed with what you put in your college application regardless of the test score. If your schools are test optional, do it. Like, no. If you don't feel confident in sending your score and a school is test optional, don't send the score. Like. Yeah, so I did send my AP scores from the AP Language and Composition test. I got a 4 on that test, and it ended up being that I can't even get credit on that test from, like, in one of my required courses. So, in the long run, it wasn't really helpful. I know a lot of people on Twitter have said if your school and your major, your intended major, has dual enrollment, do that instead, because you can, like, you know for sure that you're going to get credit for it. Um, so I would say if you are not interested in taking the AP course, if dual enrollment aligns with like the intended major that you want to do in college and your high school offers it, I would recommend to do dual enrollment because I couldn't even get college credit for my language and composition AP test and I got a 3 on my language, literature and composition AP test so I couldn't even get credit for that either. Um, but I would say like skill wise, those two courses definitely did improve my writing skills. I know how to write on a time crunch now, which I definitely was not too skilled at in my freshman or sophomore year. In terms of college credit, AP courses sometimes are like not too beneficial because some schools just don't have an equivalent to it. Um, but in terms of like skills that you're gonna need in college, they're definitely helpful. So it depends on what you really wanna get out of a course. Like do you want college credit or being a better writer? That is the bulk of how I got into all of my colleges. Um, just to say like stats and things like that, um, my GPA was a 4.17, so it was pretty good GPA. I got a 4 on my AP Language and Composition test and a 3 on my AP Literature and Composition test. That's really it. What, what else in terms of stats do people talk about in high school? Like. I don't know, but that is a bulk of how I got into um, into all my schools. Um, if you guys want to see a, a, a more in-depth video as to why I chose NYU, um, I will definitely be doing that. Just let me know if you guys have any questions in terms of the why NYU essay, because I know a lot of people have questions about that. That's all I had for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. A stop sign. You're supposed to stop at the sign phase. Um. Okay. Are you done? Wow.